Hello. Several of you missed class the other day when we were looking at the different types of protists and comparing them and looking at their physiology and structure. And so I'm going to attempt using a mouse to get this done. I'm used to using a pen up at my smart board, but um, I'm not capable of doing that um, a far away from my computer. So let's see what we can do. This is an amoeba. An amoeba is a protist that is basically a bunch of jelly. It doesn't have a specific shape. It can change its body shape however it needs to. And one of the ways it does that is it moves these pseudopodia. So let's see. Pseudopodia is P-S-E-U-D-O-P-O-D-I-A. And pseudopodia are a false foot and it just oozes its uh, cytoplasm out and makes a foot and the foot can be used for two things first of all is movement and then the other thing it can be moved for is it can be moved for capturing prey so if we've got a little organism sitting right here then the pseudopodia would come around that prey whatever food it wanted and it would capture it and kind of suck it into its body okay the protist is a eukaryote and so we do have a nucleus, N-U-C-L-E-U-S. Um, I'll color it in so it doesn't look like the next thing we're going to do. And then the other thing it has is it has food vacuoles. And what the food vacuoles do is they are spaces that hold its prey in its body until it's ready to digest them. Sometimes if you find an amoeba, you will see some of its prey still moving around inside a food vacuole. So vacuole, V-A-C-U-O-L-E. And that is an amoeba. It is on page 464 of your um, textbook if you were to need to look at that. The next thing we're going to look at is a euglena, and this one has a few more things on it, and so it may be a little bit more of a mess when I get done, but one of the first things it has is it's got a tail that is a flagella, and so if we draw its tail in there, we can put F-L-A-G-E-L-L-A, -L -L -A, flagella, okay, yes, I know, not the greatest, um, because again, it is a eukaryote. It also has a nucleus. I'm gonna color this nucleus in like we did the rest of them. It's probably an easier way to do this, but I'm gonna get it done pretty quickly. So here is the nucleus. And on your paper, you should be drawing and labeling each of these parts. Okay. Um, the euglena also has an eye spot and we're going to actually change that and make that red. It has an eye spot down here, and to us this eye spot looks like it is on the back end of the euglena, but technically the uh, flagella and eye spot are located at the front side, so the head end of the euglena. And the eye spot just detects um, light and stuff. The next thing we're going to draw is what we call a contractile vacuole. And just like vacuoles, if you remember uh, the vacuole in a regular cell when we studied uh, plant and animal cells, the, contract, uh, the vacuole holds water. Well, this one, in a, many of the protists, they open and close. They open and close. And contractile is a long word, so it's going to take me a second. I'm going to keep talking. They open and close to regulate contractile, to regulate the water movement in and out of these guys. And so they open and close vacuole. On the notes, you can see a picture of one. And on the pond, life in a drop of pond water, you can see that also. And they do usually have several of them. And then the other thing that is important for these guys is the presence of chloroplast. So we're going to just draw some chloroplast here. Uh, what's interesting about these guys is they can go and capture prey but at the same time they can also make their own food because they have chlorophyll in them. Let's go chlorophyll. 
Remember, chlorophyll is the green pigment. Chlorophyll is the green pigment here located uh, that help photosynthesize. Okay, so I believe that takes care of our euglena. Moving on, we'll go to the paramecium. And the paramecium is found on page 469. There's a nice picture of a paramecium in there. It's actually a drawing, not a picture. But there's also some pictures in there, too. And these were the guys we saw a lot of in the um, in our pond water lab. This part right here is called an oral groove. And you can see this thing whenever the paramecium are spinning and moving in the water. It's an oral groove. And oral probably makes you think of mouth. And so, yes, this acts like a mouth. They have cilia all around, which we'll draw in a second, that funnels the stuff into the oral groove. And then they have this food vacuole right here that uh, food goes into. Okay, since we were talking about the cilia, let's go ahead and do it. Hopefully it won't take me too long. They do have cilia, which are the short projections. They're kind of like flagella, except they're shorter, and there's many more of them. And they're around their body, and they beat these things, and it helps them move through the water. And the cilia, as I'm getting around there, are also uh, lining the oral groove, so they help push food into this oral groove also. Okay, so these are cilia. C-I-L-I-A. Okay, so there's the cilia. Uh, these guys are kind of interesting because they have not one, but they have two nucleus. They have two nucleus. They have one of them which is a macronucleus. Told you I'm not real good with writing with a mouse. I do much better with a pen. Nucleus, that should be an N. And then this guy right here is a micronucleus. I'm not going to write the whole thing, I'm just going to write the micro. Okay. Uh, one is, one's responsible for the different things going on in the cell, the other is responsible for reproduction. They also have contractile vacuoles to help release the water in and out and I think that takes care of everything in the paramecium. Um, another protist that you saw lots and lots of were the diatoms and the diatoms are located on 466 and it tells you about them. These are some pretty interesting guys. Um, they are all kinds of shapes. You can draw a few of them. This is a diatom, probably one that you saw a lot. You saw some that were very skinny. Uh, you see them that look like boxes, and they've got lines down them. There's even some, I don't know that we saw any, but kind of look like starfish. So they've got uh, radial symmetry. There's some that are circular. There's even some that are triangular. And these guys are pretty neat. You probably use these guys today. They're abrasive, and diatoms are actually the shells of these little organisms. And so they're abrasive, just like a shell would be if you were to get a shell from a, um, oh, a little crab or something you find out on the beach. They are abrasive, and so they put them in toothpaste to help you clean your teeth. And they also are uh, phospholuminescent so they glow and so they put these things in paint and this is what they paint the highways with okay so I'm gonna go through this chart real quick you can stop your video if you need to to fill in your chart we have the amoeba he moves with pseudopodia he reproduces asexually so he just kinda splits apart into two new amoebas he is heterotrophic so he has to go out and hunt food and the structures on him is he doesn't have a cell wall that would not if he had a cell wall he wouldn't be able to move around and he does have the false feet so an amoeba a euglena has the flagellum he can reproduce both sexually and asexually and really doesn't make baby euglena but he can go and exchange DNA with another euglena and make him more diverse make him um, have better DNA to be able to survive a little bit more they are heterotrophic and autotrophic so 
if they can if they find food they can eat that and that'll work for them or they can photosynthesize and make their own food their special special structures are that they have the flagella and the eye spot the paramecium has cilia to help it move it reproduces again both sexually and asexually again exchanging dna or splitting apart in half uh, they are heterotrophic they have to capture their food and they have those cilia that help them beat um, move around and capture their food diatoms glide they will very slowly glide across the screen when you see them they reproduce asexually so they split in half they are photosynthetic they contain chlorophyll but they're not going to show up real green because when you see them you're seeing that shell around the outside and then the diatom is a double shell made of silica sand um, if you remember reading the book I think of yesterday they talked about how some of that or I know what it was it was on the microviewer talked about how those shells may be responsible for some of our oil deposits down in the bottom of the ocean algae are also protist we did not draw any algae because they're really just not all that great to draw but algae can reproduce both sexually and asexually they are photosynthetic and they're believed to be the first plants the evolution theory says that algae were one of the first green organisms and that is that what plants evolved from algae can be unicellular or multicellular many of them live in colonies together they provide nutrients to others in fact algae are the most important nutrient provider because they're the largest group of photosynthesizers in the world and then one more that we haven't hit yet in the drawing again because they're pretty boring is mold and if you have a cup and you have left that cup sitting in your room before and you go back in after a week or two and it's got some black slimy stuff on it that is slime mold which is a protist and it oozes or streams it reproduces asexually it is heterotrophic so just like fungi it's heterotrophic it has to go out and eat food or absorb food from somewhere and it caused the potato famine in Ireland so it infected the potatoes and then they weren't able to eat the potatoes so this concludes the comparing protozoans and so hopefully you will be able to now complete that project that uh, paper if you missed that in class